risk a rising population, a greater number of vehicles on the road, and an increasing cost of energy, many American cities are looking for ways to properly and appropriately invest in transportation infrastructure. Many have used congestion mitigation plans, they have strengthened the regulation for drive times, and even extended and expanded bus and metro lines. One metropolitan area in particular has turned to a self-run carpooling system known as Slug. So let's take a ride. It all begins here in large and empty parking lots like this one at Horner Road in Woodbridge, Virginia, Monday through Friday. These concrete paradises serve as the commuting stations for thousands every morning in communities along the Interstate 95 corridor in the Washington metropolitan area. Here, some catch the bus. However, most use a system known as slugging. Riders park their vehicles and get into their respective destination lines in the morning, awaiting patiently for the next available car. Commuters pull up their cars at these lines and pick up riders, enabling them to use the high occupancy vehicle HOV3 restricted lanes through access from the nearest on ramp. This synchronization occurs every morning without prior coordination. And the reversal of this process occurs in the evening on the way back home, just like clockwork. Most of the commuting lots utilized for slugging are positioned in proximity to the HOV3 lanes, which operate between 6 to 9 a.m. northbound and 3.30 to 6 p.m. southbound, so commuters can travel Interstate 95 swiftly and efficiently. I'm here with uh, Mr. David LeBlanc. Whenever they were trying to promote carpooling and they developed the Shirley Highway, uh, this is back in the early 70s. It actually started off as HOV4, and it was restricted to just, you know, buses at that point. Then they opened up the carpoolers, uh, so you could have a carpool, but you had four occupants rather than three as it is now. And what would happen is, as, you know, to get a carpool of four, sometimes, you know, someone's on vacation, somebody's uh, sick, not able to, you know, to commute in that day. Well, then they left the carpool kind of stranded, so they had to pick up an, an extra body. They would pull up to the uh, bus stops, and in this case, the Shirley Highway ended right there in Springfield, and so right at the, uh, there's a bus stop right across the street from Bob's Big Boy Restaurant, uh, carpoolers would pull up and ask the people that are waiting in line for the Pentagon bus, you know, if you'd like a free ride to Pentagon, and so uh, people would hop in, and what happened, as, as that became more and more popular, and word began to spread amongst the carpoolers, really, that if you needed an extra part person, you could stop at this bus stop and pick up an extra person. Then the people in the bus line started just waiting for those cars to pull up rather than paying the four or five dollars to get on the bus. And so what eventually happened is the bus drivers would pull up, and let's say there were 10 or so, you know, presumably bus riders standing in line, the bus would pull up and nobody would feel the bus. So the bus drivers started calling the people in line, you know, fake you know, bus riders, they were counterfeits, they were slugs, which is the, the fake counterfeit coin. So, you know, it, it, it was kind of a derogatory term that bus riders, bus drivers used, but eventually, you know, it kind of became the, the, the term for those that they were catching into carpooling, you know, that, that kind of thing. And so that's, that's kind of how the name slug kind of, you know, developed over the years. This was in the early 70s, this was around the Arab oil embargo. Even before I, I came to the D.C. area, I had a, you know, co-worker, somebody that already lived here that I was going to work you know, with. He described the different modes of transportation. Slugging was one of the ones that he described. Of course, for most people, your immediate reaction is, I'm not going to do that. It, it goes against everything that, you know, your, your mom was talking, you know, never get the car with a stranger kind of thing. And so there was one day in February, it was, I, mean, I remember this because it was a cold, you know, February day, light rain. I wasn't for sure if I'd missed the bus. If I was early, I just didn't know. And right across the street, you know, was the slug line. And uh, I thought, let me, just, let me just try it. And so I walked across the street, and it's like anything. It, it once that kind of that mystery, you know, is it, gone, and you realize, hey, this is just a bunch of other professional people that are just trying to get to and from work. You know, you think, oh gosh, this is a, a great system. And of course, you know, once, once you once you do it the first time, it changes your whole, you know, behavior, so to speak. Was it had those very flexible hours? You could come and go anywhere. In, you know, slugging, you know, window hours. If I had going to work even earlier, wasn't a problem. I could, I could either drive myself if I wanted to or I could take the bus. I mean, I was never really stranded. I always had the opportunity to take the bus home if I needed to. Uh, I, I like, you know, reading, uh, taking a nap, writing out bills. 
slightly. I never felt any obligation at all to talk because kind of the rules are you don't talk. It, it just solved all, for me personally, all my commuting problems. Is an extra element of safety that you have three people in the car, not just two. There's kind of a standing joke, you know, like a guy in the state is not a carpool. If the HOV3 is, is critical, having the, the dedicated HOV lanes on 66 and 270, it's so easy for, you know, people to violate the HOV. They slide over to the HOV lanes, they slide back out, and it's hard for the police to enforce. So it's easy to enforce. Every slug line has a backup form of public transportation. It's just kind of a, uh, a perfect environment. The concern is, at least from the slugging community, I think, is is that it's going to congest the HOV lane. Of course, the slugs is a huge time, time savings and it's free. If you lose one of those two things, in this case time savings, then you, you lose a, a, at least a part of the reason why you're slugging in the first place. The good, one of the good things about slugging is that nobody's in charge, there's no bureaucracy, there's no red tape. There, there's a role for government to help promote slugging but yet not get too involved in it. And you gotta have enough drivers and riders and everything has got to come together in this, you know, you know, crucible of of slugging. Well, I, I think we could actually develop slugging on sixty six and two seventy if V dot and you know the district and everyone else, you know, increase the restrictions, maybe even extend it the hour. You have to have a, you know, obviously a population of people that want to go to the same place that you're going. It's not that easy. I mean, it, once you can get a flood line started, then it becomes kind of self sustaining You have to get the right number of drivers and the right number of riders. Um, Mr. Okay. LeBlanc, author of Slugging, The Commuting Alternative to Washington, D.C., thank you so much for your time. Thank you. It's been a rare opportunity to talk with you. Thank you. After two hours of driving, I went to Horner Road to speak with some slugs. Here's what they had to say. Who uses the slug system? Uh, you wouldn't believe that's one of the best things about the whole slugging program is you get to meet all kinds of different people. So you get people that are, you know, blue collar workers that are working downtown, maybe doing construction. You get, uh, you know, people that are PhDs. You get um, senior executive service from the government and uh, uh, vice presidents of corporations that are driving and they need to get to their destination quickly and so it's very convenient to be able to come by and pick up somebody uh, in a slug line and they know that it's, it's going to be a safe, uh, you know, safe drive because the kind of people that are involved with the slugging are interested in getting someplace and so you're the benefit is for both, for both people, the driver and the uh, I find that it's a lot of professionals, military people, and they're all in the same boat just looking to get to work and get back. Well, other people are stupid enough to live over 30 miles away from where they work. <laughs> How long have you been slugging? About 10 years. Oh, okay. I've been slugging year. for about 6 years. About 9 years. Miss Karen says the slugging system represents opportunity. She once slugged with an astronaut. Mr. Darrell says it can be frustrating sometimes when you can't find a ride. And veterans like Mr. Stackhouse say that it offers a blend of being convenient, predictable, and conservative. What's your reason for slugging? Uh, my boss told me that I can slug since uh, I didn't have a uh, driving license. I was newcomer to the United States. And uh, he told me actually uh, to slug to work. Uh, so that way it was very economical for me. And also, uh, since I didn't have a driving license, uh, I preferred to select to buy more Because <laughs> I'm cheap. Because you're cheap. Oh! <laughs> no, it's really the fastest way to get it. It's uh, efficient. The it's convenience convenient. and the speed of the movement. Because uh, before that, I was driving by myself to a location that didn't have slugging. And I was uh, really annoyed with the fact that I had to sit in traffic. You know, this morning the cops pulled us over. That I had one story happen to me, and it was such an infamous story that one day I was slugging home and somebody told the story about me to Meet me. John and meet Rowan. Both are engineering students at the university, and they gave me their insight into the slugging system. Environmentally friendly. Uh, fast. Okay, so efficient, time-saving, and beneficial. Yeah, definitely. Um, especially if you would cut down on fuel costs for you and also probably make it a little bit more enjoyable um, instead of you know just going by yourself by work to work 
um, I think it actually really helps kind of like Especially if everyone's, if like so many people are going to the same spot, why would you have like a gazillion cars going to that same spot? So one thing I think is a little bit weird about this slugging system is there's like some formalities with the rules that they have. Like for example, um, when you get in the car, you aren't really allowed to start talking with the driver unless they initiate the conversation, which seems really weird to me. I mean, if I was getting in the car with someone, I'd at least like to introduce myself and learn about them a little bit. I mean, if they wouldn't be quiet the entire time, like, that's fine. But for me, it'd just be really weird to get into a car and not say anything at all. As far as getting pulled over or getting in the car with weird people, um, I think that's something you just have to get over. Uh, no one's forcing you to get in the car, so you can decide. Uh, and then, if someone runs out of gas, that's, yeah, there's not much you can do about that, but that's a shame. For me, I think it's just kind of part of the risk that you would take as being part of that system. Um, I mean, like, things happen, things come up, like, ran out of gas, like, I can understand, I mean, you know, things happen like that. But getting pulled over, I mean... First of all, speed. Like, if you can get to work quickly or wherever you're trying to go, that is important. Uh, the second is the price that you pay. So if you're paying a lot for gas or little, that definitely affects things. Um, well, for me, if I can walk, I prefer to walk there. Um, just because I really like, you know, like getting in touch with nature and kind of being aware of my surroundings. But if I do have to drive, I would definitely look for something that's fuel efficient. Um, something that wouldn't really cost that much, preferably, and something that's comfortable and easy to use. Every day, thousands choose to slug, which could be the difference between getting home in 30 minutes or three hours. Would it be any better if you were driving a convertible? I mean, it does have an, <laughs> does have an aspect of, of nature and of air. You know, I've, air. I've never actually been in a convertible before. Um, I've heard it can be kind of loud. I know, I mean, like, I like having like, conversations with people when I'm in a car, so I don't know if that would really work that well. Um, I would like to try it sometime, though. I would okay. be open to that option. You'd be open to that option. <laughs> Fantastic. Thank you for your time, Ms. Rowan. Thank spray. you, Michael Boone. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you could get pulled over, um, you could run out of gas if you're driving yourself. Um, I mean, you can also look at their gas gauge for them and tell them, you know, you need to get gas or you need to slow down or whatever. 